uh, welcome back to this next video and uh, in this video we are going to talk about the uh, protein staining or what you can call it the uh, protein spot detection now once the protein bands that have been separated by electrophoresis whether you are going for uh, the one dimensional electrophoresis or two dimensional electrophoresis so as the proteins they are usually gather this so they can be visualized by using a uh, different methods of in gel detection now they are called is the in gel detection because all of these uh, stains that you are using they are actually detecting the protein bands within the gel therefore they are known as the in gel detection now over the uh, past several decades uh, the demands for improved sensitivity for small sample sizes and compatibility with downstream application and uh, detection instrumentation this has driven the development of uh, several basic staining methods over the years now each of these methods they have got particular advantages as well as the disadvantages uh, and a number of uh, specific formulation of each type of method provide optimal performance for a uh, various situation so depending on your sample size uh, depending on the type of proteins that you are dealing with you can actually select the uh, specific stain or the specific formulation which give you optimal performance for uh, your particular situation now when we talk about the uh, general principle or the uh, general steps of the gel staining uh, so the first step after performing the uh, uh, denaturating polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis the SDS page and if you uh, if you are not clear about the concept of the SDS page uh, I have a detailed video on the SDS page and I link I I'll share the link in the description so it is called is the denaturating because because of the uh, beta marcaptoethanol, ethanol you are actually uh, denaturating the protein so the first step uh, when you go for the staining is to disassemble the gel cassette and place the uh, thin polyacrylamide gel in a tray filled with water or buffer to remove the anionic SDS reagent uh, because when you talk about the SDS page you are using this uh, SDS to give the uh, negative charge to all of the proteins so that the proteins get separated only by their molecular weight now this uh, SDS it is actually uh, it can affect the staining process so the first step you do is that when you uh, disassemble the gel cassette you are uh, going to uh, wash your gel uh, with water or buffer to remove this SDS now to make the protein visible then you have to add a specific uh, protein specific uh, dye binding or color producing chemical reaction that must be performed on the protein within the gel therefore this process is known as the in gel detection now depending on the particular chemistry of the strain we will be uh, discussing about different stains that are using that are used for the staining and protein and in this particular video we will be focusing on a single one which is known as the Kumasi stain so the depending on on the uh, particular chemistry of the strain uh, various steps that are necessary to hold the proteins in the matrix and to facilitate the necessary chemical reaction now all these steps uh, the uh, all of these staining steps they are usually performed in solutions uh, that is uh, with the uh, with the gel suspended in the tray filled with one liquid reagent or another depending on the steps that you are performing now the common steps of all of the uh, staining procedures or all of the uh, staining methods uh, they include uh, uh, one or more of these steps so the first step is a water wash to remove the electrophoresis buffer from the gel matrix because these buffer and uh, the SDS that can actually affect the staining process so the first step is to uh, remove the electrophoresis buffer uh, usually the water that you are using to remove the electrophoresis buffer is a uh, deionized water then an acid or alcohol wash uh, to condition or fix the gel to limit the diffusion of proteins bands from the matrix and uh, depending on the uh, stain that you are using you may be uh, performing this step or you may not be performing this particular step now the third step is the treatment with the stain reagent to allow the dye or chemical to diffuse into the gel and bind or uh, react with the protein so that the protein can be uh, visualized and the last step in most of the staining procedures that is the de-staining uh, which actually removes the excess dye from the background gel matrix because initially when you uh, are going for the staining step uh, your gel as well as the protein bands within it they get stained and in this de-staining procedure you actually remove the excess strain from the uh, 
background gel matrix so only the proteins they are in interaction with the uh, stain and you can actually visualize them against uh, a transparent background now depending on the uh, particular staining method two or more of these steps that we discussed they can be accomplished with uh, with one step now for example a dye reagent that is formulated in an acidic buffer that can effectively fix and stain in one step uh, conversely certain functions require a similar step certain uh, staining procedure they require extra steps for example we will discuss in detail about the uh, silver staining so in silver staining uh, you require both a stain reagent step uh, addition of the stain as well as a developer step to produce the uh, colored reaction product so in this particular video we are going to uh, focus on uh, one of the most common stain that is used to stain protein which is known as the Kumasi dye stains now the most common method for angel protein detection uh, is staining with the Kumasi dye now the Kumasi brilliant blue as uh, it is called and these are the uh, dyes that are used for the staining of protein so the Kumasi brilliant blue that is the name of two similar triphenyl methane dyes that were developed for use in the textile industry so their uh, initial purpose was to stain the uh, uh, textile in the textile industry uh, but they are now commonly used for staining of the proteins now they are called is the triphenyl methane and this is actually the uh, structure of the triphenyl methane uh, with its uh, molecular formula so both of these uh, Komasi brilliant wood that we will discuss one is known as the G250 and the other one is the uh, R250 so they have got this basic structure of the uh, triphenyl uh, methane now this uh, Kumasi Brilliant Blue G250, this is one dye, it actually differs from the Kumasi Brilliant Blue R250 which is another dye uh, by the addition of the two methyl group. I will show you the structure of the uh, G250 and R250 in a while. Now the name Kumasi that is a registered trademark of the uh, Imperial Chemical Industry which is actually a British chemical company. Now, uh, as I've told you, this Kumasi Brilliant Blue, uh, two of the dyes, uh, two of the most common dyes that are used for the staining of protein, what is known as the R250 and the other one is known as the G250. If you can see over here, this is the uh, triphenyl methane structure that is present in uh, both of the G250 and the R250. The basic difference between the two is that if you can see uh, that in the G250, uh, these uh, green circles that are actually representing the uh, two methyl groups that are present in the G250 but they are absent from the uh, R250 so the basic structure that remains the same the difference between the two is that the G250 they have got these two extra methyl groups now when you talk about the uh, staining of the protein by this uh, Kumasi Brilliant Blue whether that is the R250 or the G250 where they actually interact uh, where the uh, Kumasi Brilliant Blue stains where they interact with the protein so the specific amino acids that these uh, R250 and the G250 are interacting with uh, they are the lysine, the histidine, the arginine, the tyrosine, tryptophan and the phenylalanine so these are the uh, common amino acids to which the R250 and the G250 they interact and when they interact over there they are actually giving you the uh, color the bands of the protein in a colored fashion so you can actually visualize them so these are the proteins to which the R2, the, the amino acids in the proteins to which the G250 and the R250 they interact if you talk about the name why it is called is the Kumasi uh, the uh, Kumasi it is known as the uh, Kumasi because it was uh, uh, discovered or it was uh, first time produced in uh, the Kumasi city uh, in the uh, Ghana country therefore it is known as the Kumasi because this Kumasi it is one of the uh, famous cities in the Ghana and as it was first produced over there therefore it is known as the uh, Kumasi dye now the suffix R, as I've told you, uh, this is known as the R250 or this is G250, so what this R and G means. So this suffix R in the name of the uh, Kumasi Brilliant Blue R250 uh, is an abbreviation for red uh, because when you talk about this R250, the, the blue color of the dye that it produces, it has a slightish uh, reddish tint. So it is blue but it is actually having a slight reddish tint, therefore this suffix R is added to the uh, this particular dye. 
<coughs> if you talk about this G variant, the G250, so in the uh, G version of the Kumasi uh, Brilliant Blue dye, the uh, color has a more greenish state. So as they are having a little bit differences in the color production, therefore one is known as the R250 and the other one is known as the uh, G250. Uh, the uh, G the 250 term that originally donated uh, denoted the purity of the dye. If you talk about the sensitivity of the uh, Kumasi stain, so the Kumasi dye reagents they can detect as few as 8 to 10 nanograms per band for some proteins and about 25 nanogram per band for most of the protein. So they are, you can see, very sensitive if they can uh, detect uh, as low as eight nanogram of a protein band. So they are actually used uh, in a variety of the uh, staining procedures. If, it, if I give you the uh, uh, steps that are involved in the uh, Kumasi staining, so when you talk about these uh, Kumasi stain, the procedure I'll be telling you that will be uh, both for the R250 and the G250. Now when you talk about these uh, Kumasi stains, the R250, if you can see over here, that usually come in the uh, concentrated form, as you can see over here, this is 10x. So the R250 that actually comes in uh, a 10x concentration and if you are using it for the staining, you have to dilute it to the uh, 1x. So the uh, first step you have to do is that you have to make the 1x solution of the uh, R250 because it comes in a concentrated uh, solution. The water that you will be using that would be the deionized water because if you are using the distilled water there may be some kind of ions present over there and they may negatively affect the staining procedure. So the water that you use in this staining procedure that is usually the deionized water. Now the uh, all of the volumes of the solution are according to the size of the gel. For example, if you have got a, a small gel, that means that the solution or the quantity of the solution or the amount of the solution that you will be using that will be small. But if you are dealing with the uh, larger gel sizes, for example, if you have got a gel of 10 into 10 centimeter, and if you are using the uh, 100 ml solution for the staining of the protein, so then if you are dealing with uh, 20 into 20 centimeter gel of course the uh, amount of the solution that you would be using that will be doubled so all of the volume of the solution that you are used for staining they are according to the uh, size of the gel so the uh, first step as i've told you that you have to go for the uh, dilution of the stain and you have to uh, dilute it uh, to the 1x so there is uh, the deionized water and here you have added your uh, 10x concentrated solution to the uh, deionized water to make the 1x solution uh, in the next step what you have to do is that you have to rinse the gel with the deionized water and as I've told you this uh, rinsing is very important because the buffer that you have used in the electrophoresis uh, and the SDS that is already there and is the SDS uh, is a negatively charged molecule in the buffer you have got different kinds of the electrolytes so they can negatively affect the staining procedure so you have to uh, once you have completed your uh, SDS phase you have to rinse the gel with the deionized water to remove the uh, SDS as well as the uh, electrophoretic buffer. Uh, you have, once you have made the 1x solution of the R250, you have to uh, shift it to a clean uh, receptacle. So uh, on one side you have made your uh, 1x solution, uh, after that you have rinsed your gel with the deionized water and then you have to transfer your gel that you have already washed with the deionized water to the uh, receptacle containing the uh, 1x solution of the R250. Uh, once you have uh, transferred your gel to the uh, 1x solution of the R250, the next thing you have to do is you have to shake the gel for about one hour uh, in the speed of about 40 RPM. So once you have introduced your gel into the staining solution, you have to actually uh, put it on a shaker and you have to shake it for about one hour so that the stain uh, that can actually interact with the proteins uh, that are present in the bands and when once they interact you can actually get the uh, staining of the protein so you have to shake it for about one hour at about the speed of 40 rpm 40 to 50 rpm 
uh, the uh, once uh, you have uh, incubated the gel within the one x solution of the r254 one hour at shaking uh, then you have to remove the one x solution of the r250 into an appropriate container uh, once you have uh, removed that once you have removed the uh, one x staining solution uh, next step you have to do is you have to add another solution which is actually 50 percent methanol 10 percent acetic acid solution uh, so this is your gel so uh, once you have uh, removed the staining solution then you have to add the second solution which is actually having 50 percent methanol and 10 percent acetic acid solution and you have again to you have to shake the uh, gel within this particular solution uh, at room temperature for about 30 minutes uh, once you have uh, once you have incubated uh, the uh, gel in the uh, shaker for about 30 minutes you have to remove this uh, methanol acetic acid solution the 50 percent methanol and 10 percent acetic solution into an appropriate container and then you have to add another solution uh, which is now having 12 percent methanol and 2.5 percent acetic acid solution uh, to the receptacle containing the gel so so far we have added three solutions first we have added the one x solution of the uh, r250 then we have removed that then we added the second solution which was 50% uh, methanol 10% acetic acid then we have removed that now we are adding the third solution which is having a small 12.5% 12, 12, uh, methanol and 2.5% uh, acetic acid solution uh, once you add this 12.5% uh, methanol 2.5% acetic acid solution you have to uh, add an absorbent towel uh, at one end of the uh, receptacle containing the gel and the uh, acid methanol acetic acid solution and you have to allow the gel to de-stain this methanol acetic acid solution is actually uh, a de-staining solution so you have to allow the gel to de-stain at room temperature overnight at gentle shaking by gentle shaking i mean about uh, uh, 20 to 30 rpm uh, after overnight incubation this is how the protein bands that look like uh, all of the um, comas stain that has been removed from the gel and that is only concentrated in those particular area of the gel where we have got the uh, protein bands so this is how the uh, protein bands look like when you stain them with the comasi stain now all these steps uh, for the uh, g250 they are the same as we discussed for the r250 except for the dilution step because the g250 that usually come as 1x concentration so if that comes at 1x concentration you do not need to go for the dilution step so all of the steps for the r250 and the g250 they are the same except that in the r250 you have to get that extra dilution step that is not needed in the g250 step uh, in the next video we're talking about some other staining procedures so uh, if you like the video please subscribe to my channel uh, hit the like button and share it with your friends